Good morning guys and welcome to this week's vlog. Now last week I was out with Jason Jones or for me it was yesterday but I'm guessing by the time I've uploaded this vlog it'll be last week for you guys. But I was out and about with Jason Jones and we went up to I believe it's Watkins Path and Watkins Falls. If you haven't already seen that video by the way I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, well fantastic that was by the way Jason just want to say thank you for that it was a fantastic day. Now, I slept in the car park, woke up this morning, and Jason pointed me to a lone tree, not the lone tree at Lamberis, by the way, but he pointed me to a lone tree that nobody ever photographs in Wales and said, if you want a fantastic sunrise shot, then go there. I dropped Jason off, slept in the van, woke up this morning, it was pea soup as pea soup could be. So therefore, I basically slept in, because there was no point getting up, because it was just a pointless exercise. So what I'm doing now, now I'm for, now I'm fed and watered, I'm gonna head off to that said place. But just before I go there, I've no idea what the light's gonna be like, by the way, uh, it's very overcast here. But just before I go there, because and only because I slept in the car park at the infamous Lone Tree at Clamberis, I think it is, then I thought, okay, well, before I venture off, let's go and grab a couple of shots. Just a note, I know that this lone tree has been shot to death, but it's been shot to death for a very good reason because it, it looks absolutely stunning. Um, some say that when you come here now you have to queue up. Obviously I'm here this morning and I'm the only person here. I've been here for a couple of hours and I've not seen another soul. So I'm guessing if you pick your time right then, you know, avoiding the busy times, um, then you can, I suppose, have the place to yourself. But it really is really is stunning when you first arrive here it's like going to um, the fairy pools in the Isle of Skye people wander there and they see these fantastic shots due to the perspective of the photographer they make the falls look fantastic so when you turn up and you see these little two foot high falls and you think well where are they where are the fairy pools and you you feel a little bit disappointed until you start taking pictures well it's the same here when you turn up until you're actually stood in the A1 position, it really does look pants, it really does. Having said all of that, you could try all you might to get a different composition on this damn tree, but it's so difficult because it's such an obvious shot when you arrive here, the A1 position, the shot that everybody takes. But try as you might, and I do. Look, let me explain. This now is the A1 shot for very good reason because the foreground fits in really nice with the background. From a low perspective, the tree looks fantastic. It looks as if it's really high up into the sky and it's a tall tree. And of course it fits in so nice. Look and concentrate how the tree fits in so nice with the background. But now the minute you move away, even a couple of meters, five meters, 10 meters, then really go outside your comfort zone. Look what happens. The tree blends into the background and in all honesty, it just doesn't look good at all. Me being me, of course, I wanted something a little bit different in the shot. So I picked up a bag of duck food and I brought some duck food here. You can guess why. I wanted to, uh, obviously not at this shot here, but at the other lone tree, but it didn't really matter. I've used it here. Um, and the reason why I've used it here is because it's delightful. The water is so flat and smooth and everything. I've taken a few shots. I've actually been here before photographing and so is probably any photographer that lives within a 200 mile radius. They've probably all been here as well. Um, but I brought some duck food with me and the idea was, of course, throw the duck food out, get the birds to land, wait till the water, water settles just a little bit and then grab some shots with some birds. And to my delight, I know you probably can't see them there, um, that's because they're over there. <laughs> but to my delight, a couple of swans joined me.
over the next month or so I'm going to be introducing a lot of educational videos uh, how to's what not to's etc etc and the reason why I'm doing that because there's an awful lot of regurgitated nonsense on the internet that really winds me up every time I see it hear it and read about it if that's something of interest to you then please subscribe to this channel if you're new to this channel hit that notification bell and you never know you might even learn a thing or two Pretty nice that Jason. Thanks for the recommendation. That's what you get for local knowledge. Contact somebody that lives local or shoots often local and then you'll probably end up with little gems like this. Except I've got a slight issue and the slight issue I've got is that this needs some work compositionally wise. Wherefore, the tree at, or the lone tree at Lamberis this morning um, was an obvious, obvious composition. The minute you turn out, it's pretty obvious to anybody with, uh, with an average inclination of how landscape photography works. Um, this one, however, is slightly different. Let me explain. As much as this lone tree it is, it's fantastic. Um, and it stands so proud it's just not in an obvious position to shoot with regards to the background um, the tree looks fantastic there's a big rock in front but that doesn't matter because the big rock in front is just is covered with that gorgeous green moss and it just adds a little color and it adds a little bit of interest to the image and i really like that except where do we put it in regards to the background now i'm not saying not to take this shot but if you come slightly further away from the tree, we lose the dominance of the tree. It sits lower down on the horizon. We can get a much better background though. Mountain in the background, uh, the mountain, that gorgeous red building across there. Um, we could do a lovely panoramic sweep here, but the tree just doesn't stand out. So compositionally, I don't think this works for me. Moving just slightly lower down, now that helps with the dominance of the tree because it makes it look a lot grander in the frame. I also think shooting that way um, with the natural V between the two mountains in the background, that works a lot better. Except I want to get lower down to bring that tree higher up in the sky, but I can't because of all these ferns. So that's restricting me. Now, if I come a lot lower down, this angle here definitely shows off the tree the best in terms of now I'm lower down, I'm right on the lake's edge, so I can't get any lower than this. That tree, it just looks really quite proud and um, compositionally wise, it looks massive in the frame. The green rock is really standing out here as well. It's, it's fantastic. But now I've moved further down and closer towards the lake, I've now lost the background or the nicest part of the background, which I believe is the V. And of course, what I don't like here as well is the mountain in the background is actually cutting through the tree can you see it cutting through the tree there and I'm not keen on that so this is quite a bit of a challenge this but of course we all have a challenge my favorite angle looking at all the compositions available to me will be this angle here I can get my camera low enough down to bring that tree up in the frame and make it quite grand again it'll be a perfect lone tree shot very similar to that I took this morning a clan Barris. The lone tree there. I'm going to position the tree between the V fork and I think out of all the compositions and all the options that are open to me this is the shot that works best for me <laughs> and, <laughs> and typically the length of time it's taken me to actually record these little snippets looking for uh, good compositions with this tree a little bit of breeze has picked up and we've lost that lovely smooth water with the reflection in the background so 
I'll just have to hang on and see if that wind drops down ever so slightly. Uh, Jason did recommend that uh, I shoot this this morning, by the way, because the sun rises in that direction. And he said some of his favorite shots he's ever got is from this point here. Uh, at a beautiful sunrise with the mist on the water and the just pink skies in the background and you could just imagine just how gorgeous that would be but this morning it was raining it was completely foggy and of course there was just no light um, so realistically now time wise it's lunchtime it's about half past 12 but you know the beauty of shooting in winter days when you've got this overcast sky is that you could pretty much shoot at any time all day long and okay you're not really going to get those award winners it's not going to be the, the same as shooting a sunrise or a sunset but isn't it great to know you can just get out any time throughout the day well typically the wind has got slightly worse and now it's started raining and i've got to tell you this light is really really flat but uh that's it i've got me shot there's a lot more i wanted to do here uh, but there's no point playing around with 10 stop filters and milking that water out and so on and so forth because this rain is getting all over my filters so it's a complete waste of time so that's it this location one composition which I believe is the best one shot <laughs> Your attention for a quick second. I teach photography for a living. Shootsmart.co.uk is where I operate from. I've been running workshops and one-to-ones and all sorts of uh, different photography courses and have done over the past 15 years or so. I've been in this industry as a professional for nearly 20 years so it's not something new to me. I currently run landscape workshops twice a year to the Isle of Skye and have done for the past seven years. But this year, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I want to introduce as part of my training courses and training schedule a vlogging experience day and what that will actually entail is simply this when I decide where I'm going to go to vlog next week I'm going to put it on my website and if anybody's interested in coming along with me then you're more than welcome to it's one or two people maximum that's all but of course there, there will be some conditions involved and that's not going to be something for free um, but what you'll gain from coming along with me is basically you'll experience what I experience on the day. You'll visit some fantastic locations, the sort of locations that you see me regularly vlogging. Um, you can bring your camera and you can take pictures and of course I'm there to, to guide you and to help you talk you through compositions and talk you through your camera settings etc etc. Now it's not a full on one to one. It's not going to be that at all and there are going to be certain conditions involved but you can head across to my website, link below and have a look at those conditions yourself. But I think it's a fantastic experience for somebody to come out and really see what, what it's like to go vlogging for a day. Um, and yeah, that's it. If that's something you're interested in, like I say, look at the description below. The link is in there, click on it and see if that is something that's of interest to you.